Hey friend, we're Lisa Lord and Sarah Jacobson, and this is the Christian Business Breakdown, a podcast for faith-led business owners to start, build, and scale their business, all without second-guessing their every move. We are former teachers turned business owners who finally broke down and let go of trying to run our businesses the way everyone said we should. If you're ready to become the expert in your business and stop trying to do all the things, we've got you covered. You can start with Sarah or level up with Lisa all right here on this one podcast. It's time to set aside your never-ending to-do list, pop in your earbuds, take a deep breath, and join us each week. We equip you with the tools and skills you need to be an empowered CEO, discerning the best strategies to maximize impact and income for your unique business. And we even have a little fun along the way. We love practical business strategies, Jesus, and keeping it real. It's time to break it down. It is not a matter of if, it is a matter of when. Last week, we talked about the power of reviews, why you need them, and how to get them. And today, as promised, we are talking about the other side of the coin, what to do with a bad review. If you have not listened to the first episode in this, I recommend give it a pause, go back and listen to how to get reviews. But today, I want to share this recently happened to me, and I thought it would be such a good lesson that I had to work through some of the stuff. And I'm so grateful for my biz bestie, Sarah, here, who talked me off the cliff and helped me go about this in a really smart way that it was a non-emotional way to deal with getting a bad review. Now, I have been in business for almost 12 years. This was my first bad review. And it was a tough pill to swallow. And you've gotten dozens of good reviews. So it's not like you haven't gotten any reviews. Right. I have over 50 reviews on Amazon or not on Amazon. I have over 50 reviews on Google and I have like 40 or 50 reviews on Facebook that are different. So over 100 reviews for my business over the last 12 years, which is good because I didn't start prioritizing reviews right away. I didn't realize the power of it. So I have all five star reviews. So when I got a two star review, it really was like, what happened? What happened with this? And it was really a surprise to you. Like you are very self-aware. You know, if something doesn't go well, you're, you're willing to admit it. And this one really came from left field, which oftentimes they do. They are reviews that someone leaves you. You weren't expecting it. You didn't have an opportunity to make it right before they went public with their review and gave you something negative. And you're right. It totally blindsided me. Like it very much blindsided me. And so I want to talk through all these things that I had to work through over the last month or so. And to help you when you have this happen to you because it's going to happen. So let's talk through it. So not everyone is going to love you and that's okay. Like, and as a business owner and as a person, we want people to love us. We want people to love our products and our processes and, and what we're selling and what we're coaching and all those things. So this is really, can be really hard because it feels like an, a personal attack on your character. But we have to realize you have to have thick skin. You have to take a step back. You have to realize who you are and whose you are and that your worth is in what God sees in you and not what you produce and who, and, and your business. So you have to kind of learn how to separate those things a little bit. And the reality is what you started saying at the very beginning is not everyone's going to love you. Yep. And so you have to be able to step back from the review and look at it very, very objectively is this someone who is just angry and no matter what I do, I'm never going to make it right with them? Or is this something that I actually need to fix and take care of and improve in my business? But you have to be able to step back, have that thick skin, say, this isn't about me. Even if I did do something wrong, it's not about me. It's not who I am. And I, I can do something about this review without being emotionally attached to it. So as I was preparing for this episode, I wanted to really put a lot of scripture in here. And, you know, we use scripture throughout the podcast, but I really just felt like this episode, we need to be having it rooted in scripture. And so with each point that I make here, I want to have a, a, a verse that goes with it just to help encourage you if you are going through this. So Isaiah 43 is one of my favorite. Isaiah can sometimes be a really tough book because it's just a lot of hard language and stuff. But Isaiah 43 is one of my favorites. Um, and Isaiah 43 one says, but now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, Do not fear. I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. And just remembering who we are, that God has redeemed us, that he has made us who we are. And so being able to separate 
our business from our personal and our character is such a powerful thing. So that's the most important thing I want you to know is that you are not what you produce and you are not what your business is. You are what God says you are. You are his child. So that's just a good place to start, right? That is a good place to start. And it's a good reminder about everything we do in our business. We aren't what we produce. We are more than that. We have been called to something bigger and better by someone who is bigger and better. And so we can keep that bigger focus. Um, that helps us not take things so personally and and be so upset by it and blindsided by it. And so you got this bad review. You recognized, all right, not everybody's going to love me. I am a good photographer just because someone left me one two-star review, but but now what do I do? Because I do have this review out there. I have this testimonial, or even if it's just a really negative comment on Instagram or Facebook, now all of these people have seen it. I'm hurt by it. What, what do I do, Lisa? Thank you for asking that question. The first thing you need to do is take a step back. So once you know who you are, where your worth is, then you need to take a step back. You need to pray about it. You need to talk to a, a, t- a trusted friend, a biz bestie. One of the first things that I did before I even told my husband or anything is I voxered you, Sarah. And I was like, yeah. oh my gosh, this blindsided me. I do not know what to do. Here's how I'm feeling. And we have a great relationship and we're very honest with each other. So mm-hmm. I know you're going to be honest with me. And I so appreciate that about our relationship. It is nice to have somebody who you can, who has been in the same boat or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you were able to give me some really great advice. And this is what I was planning on doing anyway. But one of the first things I did was I sat down and I wrote an email of like how I was feeling, why her points were valid or weren't valid or whatever. You might want to think about, and this is this is true for anything. If you have any sort of situation where you're angry about something, writing an email and then deleting it <laughs> can be a really good and powerful practice because you're able to voice all of that stuff that's happening in your head. And then you can stay, take a step back and go, okay, that's not really true or whatever. Yeah. Two things about that. One, don't put their email address in it so that you can't accidentally send it. I was going to say, put it in a Google Doc. So put it, it in like, a Google Doc. So it's right. not, you're not going to send it. And, and sometimes you don't need to delete it. Sometimes those raw emotions are very, very valid and important, but just give it some space before you do anything with it. Wait 24 hours. I think this was actually on a Friday afternoon for you, wasn't it? It and was. You gave it all the way until Monday. I did. You wrote that email. You let all of that emotion out because it was very emotional. But then you sat on it for a whole weekend, let it go. You'd written it out, um, but then coming back to it later. Yeah. And that was really powerful for me in that this is one of the first times. I mean, I've gotten negative feedback before, but this one was just a little bit different. And it felt good to write it down. And it was a Friday afternoon. It was a very emotional thing, but I did not think about it very much for the rest of the weekend. So that was very, it helped in that I was, it was not taking up a lot of space in my brain. Mm -hmm. And that was very, that's very good because sometimes you can really let this get deep in your soul. Mm -hmm. And that is not a good place to be at all. So writing this down, coming back to it 24 hours later and seeing if you feel the same about it. And then once you're in that, you need to do some self-reflection. After 24 hours, the emotion has come out, like you've had some time to process. You need to ask the question, is there validity to what they're saying? Is there something that I did to deserve this? Was there something that went wrong? Is there something that I can do? You need to own your part of the problem. And I I fully believe that, you know, there's a, we can always be better, right? Not not mm-hmm. to say that you we're not good enough. That's not what I mean. But there's always something we can improve in our in our situations or in our process, in our products or whatever. And so looking at that and saying, is there a valid reason? Is there something that I could have done? Is there any validity to what they're saying? Yes. And this is where having an outside, a truly outside perspective can be helpful because this can really go one of two ways, right? Like you can own it and make some improvements that are needed to be made that actually help everyone in your business and it levels up your business, right? which is great. Yes. And we can also be in a place where we own too much of it. Yes. Where we take on all of these things. I think we, as Christian women in particular, we have this feeling of wanting to help everyone and to, to be this servant, which is not a bad thing. But we can go overboard in trying to fix something that only one person has said was broken. 
And so we have to have that balance and having someone outside your business that really is non-emotional. I mean, I felt really badly that you had a bad review, but I didn't own that for you. And so I could help you make some real decisions about what you did with that review. And so having someone to be able to help you do that can help you balance out, hey, Lisa, maybe there is something you can fix here, um, even though this is a hurtful experience. And also, you've had a hundred other reviews and no one has said this was a problem before. So weighing that out in, in taking that step back is also going to be really, really helpful. You've got to fix what's broken and you've got to ignore what just one person, you know, in the whole universe is saying is a problem in your business. Right. We can't be everything to everyone and we need to no. realize that. But no. also we do need to own our own problems. And there is a verse in Proverbs that that really speaks to this. Proverbs 28, 13, a person who refuses to admit his mistakes can never be successful. But if that person confesses and forsakes those mistakes, another chance is given. In other words – he gets a fresh start. I love that. And it's like, it, God is calling us to own it. We have to own mm -hmm. our mistakes. We, mm -hmm. we make mistakes. We are human. Mm -hmm. But when you confess it and you, you know, you try to fix that mistake, then that is where the real power is. And so often we live in this world of victim mentality and it's all this other, it's everyone else's fault. It's not my fault. So you really need to own what you did in your business and what mistakes that you made. So that, that is a big step. I always told my students when I taught sixth grade, and now I tell it to my own children, you are going to make mistakes. That is a given in life. What really matters is what you do after you make that mistake. And I was, I, I always loved the kids in my class that were a little squirrely, a little bit unruly, got into trouble a little bit, but were willing to be like, Mrs. Jacobson, I screwed up. I want to make it right. Great. I can work with that. Right. I can do something with that. Right. And so we can have that posture too of like, we're going to make mistakes in business. You have to be willing to take some risks, go out there, ask for reviews. You might get some negative ones, but now what are you going to do with that? How are you going to make it right? How are you going to respond? So let's talk about next how we respond. You have to respond. That is a given. I, I really, it really bothers me when I see some negative reviews on people's and and the owner of that page or that business has not responded because I, mm -hmm. I don't think that's right. So you do have to respond. So the, you can do this a couple different ways. One, you can do it privately where you email that person and you try to work it out privately. And ultimately, that is what I had wish would have happened with this gal is that she would have emailed me first about her issues instead of just going on Google and blasting that whatever her reasons were for whatever she said. So you, I, it, I chose to respond privately to her via email as opposed to writing on the actual review because I felt like there was bigger things that we needed to discuss before I responded to the review. So I, I wrote a very long email. It was probably too long, but um, I spent a really long time um, writing that email. So you need to decide, are you going to respond privately or publicly? And then you need to take the emotion out of it. And that is very hard to do, but that is why we have that wait grace period, the waiting period of where you're, you know, trying to figure things out. Um, but this is something that was so powerful to you, for me, Sarah, that you told me to do. And I want you to tell me what you, what you told me at that time. Well, and again, there's so many things that we talk about on the podcast that's like it's preaching to the choir because I really, really struggle with this because I my first and natural response is almost always anger. And so I have to go to the facts. What are the facts? Yes. <laughs> Just the facts, Lisa. Yes. Because we want to be emotional of this hurt my feelings. This is really difficult to me, but that doesn't really matter. It's kind of like the Godfather. This is business. Right. <laughs> it's not personal. It's business. And so we have to stick to the facts. And that can be really hard because we are designed to be emotional people and emotions are good and they are true and they are valid. But we have to go to what the facts are, numbers truth, reality, dates, whatever it is that you need to use in that review, it's got to be factual. Yeah. So this was so helpful to me because she said, what does your contract say? What have you communicated? How have you communicated? All of these things. And I was like, oh, well, in my contract, it says I'm going to do this. And I actually did way more than that. So mm -hmm. I actually went above and beyond, you know? And so mm -hmm. it also helped me to not feel obligated to give things away for free. And this is something that I have really struggled with because oftentimes I want to, I want people to like, me. I, I want things to go well. I want my business to go well. And so what I do is that I offer, oh, well, let me reshoot this session for you, or let me give you more photos, or let me 
give you a free product or whatever it might be in your business to make things right. Well, when I looked at all these things, that all of her complaints, and then I pointed to the facts of this is what I said I was going to do. And I actually did more than that. Then I didn't feel obligated to offer her something for free. And so that was very freeing for me. Yes. And that was very, very helpful. And it also was very helpful to show her, here's what I said. Here's what I did. And so you can't give me, maybe you weren't pleased with the photos and that's okay. I have to realize that not everybody's going to love every single photo, but does that warrant a two-star review? If I said I was right. going to do what I did, I did what I did. I over, I over, you know, I under promised and I over delivered. That does not mean a two-star review. Right. I think a lot of times when we're responding, we need to ask ourselves the question of how can I help this person who left me negative feedback feel seen? Because a lot of times that's what people just want. They want to feel seen. Yes. And and I think pictures is especially challenging because we have an emotional response to pictures of ourselves. Right. We don't always love our pictures of ourselves. Even though you're a beautiful, amazing photographer, that's an emotional response I might have that I might not like the picture of myself, right. but I love the picture that you took. Um, so anyway, we we have to help that person in this process feel seen because sometimes they just want to be heard and validated for what they're feeling. They're not asking for something for free in particular. They they might not even want you to reshoot your pictures because they might not want to work with you again. Right. And so and that's offering okay. something else and that's okay. Yeah. But then you're offering something for free that they don't want. So how can I help this person feel seen and heard? And also I can have a boundary in my business of, I don't want that kind of review for a service that didn't warrant that kind of review. And so how can we work together to come to some happy middle ground? And I did ask her in that email, I said, I would ask you to rethink your review. I did not ask her to give me five stars. I did not ask her to remove it. I didn't do any of that. But I thought, I said at the end, I said, this, I, I believe what I gave you did not warrant a two-star review. I would like for you to think through it and maybe change your review. You know, giving expectations of what you want them to do and how you want that to look. In the end, she was a little frustrated that I asked her to change my review. She's like, well, it's my opinion. And I said, okay, that's fine. So what I did is that I went in to her review and I responded on the review with those facts from what I had sent her in the email. I made it shorter, but I was like, hey, you know, I'm sorry that yada, yada. I, you know, I said I was going to give you 100 photos. I gave you 250. I'm sorry. You know, so I kind of went through there and made it very clear on the review that her review did not match up with what I had delivered. And I was very kind about it. And I, you know, I didn't blast her anything. I just gave the facts of what I did mm -hmm. and what, you know, I offered and how I had, I had gone above and beyond. And I, you know, whatever. She ended up deleting the review. Right. Which is her prerogative. Right. And by you trying to handle it privately first, right. that didn't work. So now you have the right to go out on the Google review and respond publicly. Right. And then what that person chooses to do after that is up to them. But this is your livelihood. This is your business. You have permission to go in and and say the facts. Right. You don't have permission to go in and blast them right. or blast their character be or unkind. be rude or be unkind. Right. But you can go in and list the facts so that when someone else comes across that two-star review, then I can look at how you responded and see, oh, this person who left the review, I'm going to trust them less right. <laughs> in what they say. Yeah. Because the truth is, and I will stand by this, the customer is not always right. I agree with that. And it's the same thing in the church. We think, oh, we've got to love everybody and, and take everybody's opinion into account. No, there are black and whites and that's okay. Uh, there's a lot of gray in Christianity, which is great too, because God says to love everyone. And at the same token, there are things that are right and that there are wrong. And it's the same thing in our business. You have permission from Lisa and Sarah to put those boundaries in your business, to do it in a way that is firm and loving and kind, but also is protective of your business. Because a bad review can can really hurt your business. So I have a friend of mine who is an Etsy seller. She's very successful. She makes quite a good living on Etsy. And she was telling me that to be like an Etsy five-star reviewer, you have to have all of your reviews five stars. And if you have wow. one review that gives you four stars instead of five, you lose your five-star status, which is like some sort of status symbol within Etsy. Sure. And she said it was re it's really hard and it's really frustrating because – 
you know, some people's like my husband was like, well, I I don't give five star reviews. Five star reviews like you blew my mind, you right. know. And so he's like, for me, four stars is like, hey, you did a really great job. I really appreciated what you do. But to a small business owner, that can really ding you or an Etsy seller or an Amazon seller. You know, you look at, oh, she only has four star reviews, you know, like. Right. So it can really hurt your business, but you need to make sure that you're responding and, you, and you're telling people why this is important. And, and that's why a lot of times communicating, you know, privately might be helpful for that. And I mean, my goal in my response to her review was not to, her, to, to make her look bad or to, to get her to remove it, but it was to show validity to my business and that what I offer is valuable and that it was a ding to my business and that's not the way I do business. And so right. by responding that way, I think she felt like it made her look bad. Because it kind of did because it was like your review was not valid. And so she deleted right. it. Now, again, right. that was not my purpose. And I even told my husband when she deleted, I'm like, I kind of wish she would have left it because right. it shows how I respond to things as a business owner. And that the way you respond is just as important as almost anything. And the Bible does talk about how we are to respond. And Ephesians 4.32 says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. And, and if we don't take that time to think through how we want to respond to those negative reviews or just difficult reviews, we can let that bitterness build up in our heart towards someone. Um, and instead we can respond with love and kindness and gentleness and hope for a really good outcome. And I really have no, I harbor no ill will towards this client who wrote that. And I can feel, I can say that with honesty and feel just fine about it. I feel like I handled the situation well. I am pleased with the outcome, like all of those things. And so it, but it was a really great lesson for me. It was such a mm -hmm. great lesson for me. And I want to share that with you guys, because I, I think sometimes we don't know how to do it and we go about it wrong because we have that knee jerk reaction reaction of like, mm -hmm. you know, we want our, we want to be seen and heard, but I loved your mm -hmm. point of that. The person writing that review wants to be seen and heard too. And mm -hmm. we feel like that too, like something happens wrong and we want to, you know, we had, we got new carpet, um, last year and the process they measured wrong. And so when they came to install the carpet, they couldn't install it all in one day. So they had to come back the next day because they didn't bring enough carpet. I was frustrated, but also, every other part of the process was great. Their communication was great. Their price was right. great. They were like, we're so sorry that this happened. We're going to get out here first thing in the morning. We're going to make this right. And so I gave them a four-star review because I was like, you know what? It wasn't perfect, but overall, the process was really great. Now, was I mad I had to have my house torn up for two days instead of one? Yeah, a little bit. Was I frustrated that they measured wrong? Yeah, a little bit. But in all in all, like it was a pretty good overall experience, but not a five-star experience, but not a two-star experience, you know? So, right. And what's funny is I think that review now has been seen like 1,500 times or something. So, you know, our reviews are powerful and I, the company, you know, hopefully that was valuable to them, you know? We want to be honest. We don't want to be dishonest and give a five-star review when we felt like it was four. So we, we want to feel that freedom to be honest as well. So lastly, I just want you to know, don't be too hard on yourself. Use it as an opportunity to grow. This was a huge growth opportunity for me. Um, but above all, letting God be the center of your business, mm. it just takes so much pressure off of you and how you have to strive and you have to be perfect and you have to be all the things. It it allows God to take some of that pressure off of you. And and I love that. So also mm -hmm. remembering if there's something in your in your business that you need to change, like is your shipping kind of wonky? Are, are, does it take you too long to deliver the product? Does your is your coaching need to be longer instead of 30 minutes? You need to be 60 minutes, you know. Is there something that you need to change as a re result of this review? And then use that feedback to get better. So use it as an opportunity to get better. That's right. And we did talk about that back in February. You can go back to the episodes we talked about selling. If there is something in your business that you can't control, like let's say you live in a rural area and the mail only picks up on Mondays and so your shipping takes a little bit longer, then just be upfront about yeah. that. If there's something in your business that is a little bit different, then just let people know that. So then when they purchase from you, they know that up front and then they don't leave a negative review because they're upset about it because you told them ahead of time that that was part of, you know, the way that your business works. Um, and so taking these opportunities with getting negative feedback or just difficult feedback to seeing what you can improve, seeing what you can communicate better to your clients 
and also saying, this is the way that I run my business. I'm just going to be very clear about it. So when you sign up, you aren't surprised. Right. Setting those expectations so that people really understand that this is the way you do it. And and we live mm-hmm. in such a world where we're so used to Amazon. We're so used to instant gratification mm-hmm. and one day shipping and free shipping. And, you know, you just need to be clear if that's not the way you run your business, that's fine. But letting people know that so they're not expecting Amazon service from a small business owner. So I love the, the verse in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. I think this is kind of a great way to end all of this is come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And sometimes when we get a negative review, it feels very heavy. And it feels very personal and it can cause us to lose sleep. And I spent many hours worrying about this and writing emails and tweaking things. And there's just great comfort in knowing that God has gone before us and that he wants to take care of us and that he has everything in his hands. We would love to help carry that burden with you because it can feel very heavy when you're lonely, you're, you're alone in entrepreneurs and you're getting this kind of feedback. What do I do with it? Hop on an empowerment call with us. Let's talk through it. There's nothing quite like processing it together with someone else. We can help you see maybe areas you need to improve. And maybe we help you see there's nothing you need to improve. And we can help you know how to respond to that review. Even if you got that review a few months ago, you can still respond and try and uh, improve that um, review with that person or at least make that situation right with that person who left the review. So hop on an empowerment call with us. Let's talk. Let's help carry that burden together so that you can feel empowered in your business, get the types of reviews that you really need to boost your business, to get that social proof, and to work through when you do get that difficult feedback. Yeah, I don't know what I would have done. I would have handled this situation very, very differently if I did not have Sarah in my life. So I'm super thankful for that. And it was just such a great growth opportunity. And we we want to make this valuable for you because when you come across this situation, we want you to have to be able to deal with it in a way that is God-centered, that is going to help your business, that's not going to cause more dissension, that's going to cause more problems for your business. Let's break it down. Mm, that's what yes. we do on here on the Christian Business Breakdown. Let's break it down. So not everyone's going to love you. And that's okay. You're not for everyone, right? But remember who you are and whose you are and that how God has created you is, you know, you are created in his image. Number two, take a step back before you respond or you might regret it. So take a step back, maybe write the Google Doc email, um, write out your thoughts, but give yourself some time to respond to that. Um, But you do actually need to respond. Don't just sit on it. Don't just let it bother you forever or ignore that situation. You really do need to respond. Number three, try to make things right, but you don't have to give something away. Validating them, making them be seen, giving them the facts, telling them what you did and what you did not do. Those are all really, really powerful. And then be self-reflective. Is there something you need to change? Is Do you need to offer some free shipping? Do you need to do something to remedy that situation? Is there a process? Is there a breakdown in your process somewhere that you need to fix to improve your customer service? So those are the ways that you can deal with a negative review. And here's our plug for us as we wrap up today. If you would take a moment to go in. You know the power of reviews and how helpful they are. Go into iTunes. You can also now go into Spotify and leave a review there for us. If we have helped you at all on the Christian Business Breakdown podcast, we would love for you to leave us a review so that others can find us and know how much you love us. We love you and we are so glad that you joined us this week. We hope you join us next week on next week's episode. Thanks for joining us for today's breakdown. If this episode has empowered you, please leave a review and share with a fellow CEO. Remember, you are the expert of your business, so break it down your way.